calculus mean value theorem problems. We recently had a quiz in our calculus course where the students had a bit of a problem on mean value theorem problems. So I'm going to go over these two in this video lesson. For problems one and two, apply the mean value theorem on f of x over the interval indicated. Find each value of c that satisfies the mean value theorem. Well, first of all, we have to see that we have f of x equals x cubed minus x squared minus 2x on the interval from negative 1 to 1. Now I'm going to label negative 1 as a and 1 as b. So you look at this function here. Is this function going to be continuous over this interval? Yes. All of the functions are continuous and differentiable for all real numbers. So we're going to find, first of all, what we're trying to find is that the point, the value of C, where the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. But in order to do that, what are we going to have to find? Well, first we have to find our average rate of change. And average rate of change is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So I'm going to work on the left and figure out what those are. I'm going to find f of b, which is f of 1, is going to be 1 cubed minus 1 squared minus 2 times 1, and that's going to be equal to 1 minus 1 minus 2. 1 minus 1, that's going to be 0 minus 2, so we'll get negative 2. So the first value we're going to put here is f of b, which is going to be negative 2. Now we're going to subtract f of a. That's going to be f of negative 1, which is going to be negative 1 cubed minus negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 and that's going to be equal to <coughs> negative 1 minus 1 that's going to be negative 2 and then minus 2 times negative 1 well that's going to be the same as plus 1 so we're going to get 0 so we have f of a being 0. So we have negative 2 minus 0 over, we're going to have f of b minus a. So 1 minus negative 1. So that's going to be negative 2 divided by, and 1 minus negative 1 is 2. So we're going to get negative 1. So that is our a rock for average rate of change. Now we're going to find the instantaneous rate of change, which we do by finding f prime of x is equal to 3x squared. I'm taking this function up here, taking the first derivative of it, minus 2x minus 2. So that's that. And now we're going to take we're trying to find where i rock equals a rock. So we're going to take this negative 1 and pull it right over here in place of this f prime of x. So we get negative 1 is equal to 3x squared minus 2x minus 2. And the value of x for which this equation is valid is going to be our value of c, provided that value of c is within the interval from negative 1 to 1. So the first thing we're going to do is solve the left side for 0 by adding 1 to each side of the equation. So we get 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 2x. And then on the right side, we have negative 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. And so we can factor this, we hope, we can factor this quadratic function. So we're going to have AC up here, and A is 3, 
C is negative 1, so AC is negative 3, and B down below is equal to negative 2. So what two numbers do you add together to get negative 2 but multiply together to get negative 3? Well, you're going to get 1 and negative 3, I believe. Let's see, if you multiply those together, we get negative 3, but add them together, you get negative 2. Now we're going to divide by A, and what is A? A is 3. So we're going to get just, uh, I'll just work to the right here. We're going to have 0 is equal to, we have this negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1, so we have x minus 1 times quantity x plus 1 third. And then using our bottoms up method here, we're going to be, be 0 is equal to quantity x minus 1 times 2x, no, 3x plus 1. Okay, so for that, we get x is equal to negative one-third, and x is equal to 1. So these are And are each of these values within the interval from negative 1 to 1? Yes. And the 1, barely, just on the edge. So these are values of C. Where I rock equals A rock. Okay? Next. Problem 2, f of x equals square root of quantity x minus 3 on the interval from 3 to 7. Well, it's the same thing. We have f of b minus f of a over b minus a to find our average rate of change. So working below here, f of b is going to be f of 7, which is going to be square root of quantity 7 minus 3, which is square root of 4 or which simplifies to 2. And f of 3 is going to be square root of 3 minus 3, which is square root of 0, which equals 0. So we have f of b and f of a. Okay, so we're going to have our a rock is going to be f of b, which is 2, minus f of a, which is 0, over b minus a, which is 7 minus 3. So we're going to get 2 over 4, which equals 1 half. So next, so we have that. Now let's find the instantaneous rate of change. Well, for that, I'm going to rewrite f of x and put that f of x from radical form to rational form, so we have x minus 2 to the power of 1 half. And then f prime of x is going to be equal to 1 half, and we're going to have x minus 2 to the power of negative 1 half. And what we're going to do is multiply, using the chain rule, by the derivative of the inside, the derivative of x minus 2 is 1, so I'm just going to put parentheses 1, and which doesn't do anything to it. So we have f prime of x equals 1 over 2 square root of x minus 2. And so what we're going to do is take this 1 half a rock and replace f prime of x. So we have 1 half is equal to 1 over 2 
square root of quantity x minus 2. And I hope you can see that we can turn each fraction upside down and get 2 square root of quantity x minus 2. Why am I saying minus 2? It's going to be minus 3. I almost ruined this one here. That's minus 3 there. Okay. Just avoid a serious long term mistake. Okay. So we get 2 times quantity square root of x minus 3 equals 2. And so dividing by 2, we get, just work on the right, we get. Uh, square root of quantity x minus 3 is equal to 1. And then if we square both sides, we get x minus 3 is equal to 1. And then adding, if we add 3 to both sides, we get x is equal to 4. And then we look, is 4 going to be in the interval here? Yes, so x equals 4. Now, one thing I didn't do that I should have initially for this problem, I should have verified continuity on this interval and differentiability. Well, if we have the square root of quantity x minus 3, it's going to look like this. So. I hope you can see that between x equals 3 and x equals 7, the function is continuous and differentiable. So those are the answers. That's how to, how to do them. Good luck, and thanks for viewing.